Okay, so it's about that time where I have to start making decisions about <clears throat> uh, what cars I'm going to bring to the 2024 Vintage Off-Road Nationals. And as usual, I'll be racing the same five classes I always race. This two-wheel drive buggy, four-wheel drive buggy, stadium truck, classic, and classic four-wheel drive buggy. Um, what's new this year about the race is that this is the first year it's going to be held at Adrenaline RC in Virginia. Now, it's a different kind of a track surface compared to RC Excitement in Massachusetts. Uh, RC Excitement was a, a, a hard-packed dirt track. Um, and last year, the last year we were there, they uh, started adding glue to the surface. So that changed the properties of the track, what kinds of tires you had to run. Um, but up to that point, we were running uh, basically, you know, super soft ghosted tires like, uh, you know, M4 ghosted electrons or something like that, like a, like a Proline Shadow or... Um, like a Proline Inversion or J-Concepts Octagon, those kinds of tires. And they worked really well. And then we had to run slicks last year. Um, and now the event is at this other place in Virginia. It's a clay track, and that has its own properties. So, okay, the, from what I've heard, you need either clay compound tires uh, or super softs, depending on the temperature, depending on whether the track is worn in or not, or if it's fresh. Um, and different kinds of treads. So if it's like a fresh layout, you might want a clay slick. If it's worn in and it's warm enough, you can go to like a super soft Electron or a super soft, you know, bar type tire, like a, like a J Concepts Ellipse or something like that. So part of the challenge for me in figuring out what cars I want to bring is A, having some compatibility between cars so that I can bring, say, a single set of tires for a particular type of car and bring a few different versions of that, types of that car so that I can uh, have all the tires I need between the tread and the rubber compound, but also be able to freely choose between different cars. So for example, here, the Kyosha Pro X and the Traxxas TRX3, I'm gonna be running those or choosing between them for the two-wheel drive buggy event. Now, the way I built these is that I can mount uh, Kyosho RB6 rear rims on both, as well as uh, Tamiya DN01 uh, bearing wheels up front for both. <clears throat> so I have you know all the types of tires I would need on those rims. I could swap back and forth between these two and see what works best. Uh, the only exception to that would be for this low C double X mid motor. I am planning on bringing this as well not necessarily to compete with it, although I might, depending on how these go, uh, but more just to get a feel for it on that track for next year. <clears throat> um, so my, my front up option will be the Kyosho Pro X. I know I've said that in years prior, and, and, and each time I bring the car to the track, I either have issues with it uh, or I find ways to improve it for the next year. Um, most of the issues I've had with this car, when I did com uh, compete with it were based were related to understeer and that was I think two years ago I was trying to use it and it was pushing a lot on a wide sweeper part of the reason was because I didn't have enough weight toward the front of the chassis the other reason was because I had five degree rear toe blocks or rear uh, uh, rear toe based on the rear hinge pin mount installed on the car so I moved that five degree down to three degrees um, and I put some lead weights up front, and I also rewired the speed control so I can move the battery all the way forward and still plug it in. My wires are too short on the speed control. So all those things combined, and doing some you know, basement testing with like a little jump setup and just checking the cornering, it drives a lot better. So I think that'll do quite nicely. If I have issues with that, I have the TRX3, or at least I'd like to compare to see you know, which drives better on the track. The TRX3 is about 30 grams lighter than the Pro X, the way I have it set up right now, with uh, the components that are on it and everything. Um, and that's without a battery, okay? Uh, it's a slightly lighter car. Um, but, you know, beside, but the weights are similar. I think this is like 1378 grams uh, without a battery, and this is like 1350 or so. Um, so with a battery, they'll be over 1,400 grams. Um, they should handle similar. Uh, so I think they'll both be fine. 
So that being said, I don't think I'll need to bring the double X mid motor, but again, this is really just to, to try it out at the track really for next year. And by the way, this double X mid motor with all the electronics, all the electronics installed is about a hundred grams lighter than the Kyosho Pro X. So this is a pretty light car. Um, but provisionally, I plan on bringing all three of these, especially these two with the Kyosho as my front up option. So that's for two wheel drive buggy. For a stadium truck, I'm gonna keep it very simple and bring the RC10T2 that I have. Um, I've run the RC10T a couple of times in the past, like you know, 10 to 15 years ago, in the, the first several Vonas that I ran. And it's an okay truck. The 10T, the first gen, handles great. I don't really like how it jumps. It, the, the rear tends to bottom out a lot. On that particular 10T that I have, I have the RPM uh, gearbox, and uh, I, I think that maybe weighs more than the stock stealth gearbox. So maybe that was amplifying some of the problems I was having in the rear. The rear does feel a bit heavy, but the T2 is um, you know, mostly stock on this. It, it feels like a relatively light truck, so I don't think I'll have the same problems with jumping performance. Um, the rear tower geometry is different as well. So I, I think this will do better. Uh, and again, basic, you know, basement testing, checking how it corners and everything. It seems to drive pretty nicely. So I'm going to spend most of my time on Friday open practice, really playing with these two wheel drive buggies. If I can get those sorted and be comfortable with the track and the layout and everything, stadium truck, I should only have to do one practice run and, you know, just to confirm that it works and it works okay. And that should be good to go. Um, <clears throat> for four-wheel drive buggy, this is still a bit of a challenge for me uh, to zero in on a decision. Uh, but my front-up option, regardless of what other cars I bring as backup, is going to be the Kyosho ZXS Evolution. Um, the past two years, I've tried to race this and have had various reliability problems. Uh, I've had belt skipping issues because I used a belt that was too large. So I, I went and I did that on purpose so that I can use a tensioner to adjust the belt tension. Um, but it turns out that wasn't working very well. So I went back to the uh, standard belt size for the center to front belt. Um, it's a lot tighter now, so it doesn't spin as freely. Um, you know, if you're just pushing the car back and forth, hopefully that doesn't overheat the motor. We'll see. Um, but putting that aside, uh, I also had issues with the wing mounts, so I just put proper wing mounts on it this time. So if I flip over or anything, it doesn't bend the wing wire back. Uh, so little things like that. I think this should be perfectly fine in terms of base reliability for this year. Um, and you know, when I drove it last year during open practice, when it was you know working, it drove really great. I really liked it. So that's my front up option, regardless of what else I bring as backup. For backup, it's still a bit of a question as to whether I should bring my trusty 95YZ10, which I know works and I, I'm comfortable driving it and I can drive it really hard and it's a strong, reliable, fast car, or whether I should bring my X-Factory X5. The X5 is interesting to me because it's one of my newer builds and <clears throat> you know, I've been testing it out a little bit on the driveway outside and in the basement here. It handles nicely. Uh, it seems like a really quick car. It looks like it'd be a lot, like it would be a lot of fun to drive. So I feel compelled to bring that this year. Now, if I bring that this year, I may also want to bring my low C double X that uh, Mark Westerfield made for me because they use a lot of the same parts, uh, and they're also both set up to use 12 millimeter uh, hex wheels, uh, B74 style rims, so I could share you know rims and tires between them but why would I need to bring three four-wheel drive buggies? The only, the only type of car I'm bringing three of is two-wheel drive because I, I really want to play around back and forth with two-wheel drive buggies. For four-wheel drive, I want to focus on just two buggies with at least one that I know will work. And the other one is kind of the experimental buggy. Um, so maybe I would just bring these two um, <clears throat> because this is new or maybe I would just bring the ZXS and the YZ10. I'm currently leaning toward these two. And then for next year, I might bring the X5 and the XX4. But then if next year I bring the X5 and the XX4, why don't I bring the YZ10 this year? Because it's a known quantity. Uh, so that, that's why I'm still not quite settled yet on the X5, but I'm leaning toward that right now. Okay, so 
that's four wheel drive buggy going to and these are all the the fast classes that are run now on saturday so this adds a little bit of stress to preparation for the event open practice is friday you get all day and then you go straight to the quick stuff two wheel drive buggy four wheel drive buggy stadium truck uh, so you have to make sure you get your setups right you get your driving lines everything you know nailed down on friday uh, and for Sunday, so uh, yeah, so Sunday is more of the fun stuff. That's classic four wheel drive buggy and classic for me. There's other stuff like monster truck and so forth, but I, I don't do that. Um, so for classic four wheel drive buggy, I'm going to bring my Kyosho ZXRR laser and it to me a top force. The ZXRR is presently, presently my favorite uh, classic four wheel drive buggy. That is buggies that would use a 13.5 motor in. Uh, the benefit there is also it shares some parts with the ZXS Evolution. Not all the parts, but simple things like, you know, uh, front steering uh, caster blocks and steering knuckles and suspension arms, things like that. So there's some commonality in the parts. <clears throat> and I know it drives very well. So that's like my safe option. Uh, but the one I'd really want to try out is my Tamiya Top Force. Um, this actually has a slightly freer drivetrain than the laser, believe it or not, if you just roll it around on the floor. Uh, so this should be really snappy with throttle response. So that should be good. I know it handles well because the Dirt Thrasher, which is basically a plastic tub version of the Top Force, also handles very well. Uh, so the big question in my mind is how's is it going to jump? And that's gonna depend a lot on the kind of jumps that they're going to have at this track by the time we get there. What's the layout going to be? Um, I've seen some videos of that track where the layouts are geared more toward A-scale buggies and so some of the jumps are really long and you just have to kind of manage with, with, with your 10-scale buggies. I've seen other layouts that are more geared toward 10-scale cars. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. Uh, so I, I haven't really put that much time into tuning the shocks on this car. So if I find myself having to spend too much time on that, I'll just revert to the laser because I know this is, has a pretty good setup on it already. Um, but I do want to try this. Um, the other option in my mind that I was considering was my Schumacher Cat 2000, which I made a, a, a small change to with the Ackerman to make it steer more aggressively at low speeds. Um, I think that would basically make the car really, really good compared to what I had the last time I ran it. Uh, but <clears throat> I want to try these two. So, you know, maybe next year I'll bring the Cat 2000 and the Cat 2000 EC. I'll put a 13.5 in that and run those in the classic four-wheel drive class. We'll see. But I'm really curious about the top force. And it would also be nice to embarrass everyone else with a Tamiya in classic four-wheel drive buggy. That would be a lot of fun. Uh, now, since I'm bringing the top force, it would make sense for classic class to bring the Dirt Thrasher. Again, they share a lot of parts. So, when you're packing all these cars, you want to have some commonality between the types of parts you need so that you don't have to have an entire truck's worth of spare parts. Um, up to this point, up to today, actually, I was considering bringing my Tamiya VQS uh, as the four-wheel drive option for classic, but that means a different set of spare parts in another parts bin that I would have to bring. Plus, this car is significantly faster than the VQS. So again, it's a safe option. It's a known quantity. Um, so I, right now, I'm intending on bringing this. But the front-up option for Classic is actually going to be this Tamiya Madcap. I made some build videos on this uh, earlier this year. Um, this is my latest two-wheel drive option for Classic. And um, I think... I did a good enough job on this build to make it pretty quick and reasonably durable. Uh, I've seen the Madcap run by other people in the classic class, and it seems like it handles pretty nicely. It's just the, the particular versions of the Madcap that I saw were like really beat up. They were kind of clapped out. Um, having something that's with a bit more of a sophisticated build, I think would be nice. And of course, I love the color scheme on it. It's my, you know, it's how I like I really like neon yellow and flames and everything. So this would be look really nice on the track. The question is whether or not this will be as fast as a Manta Ray or a Dirt Thrasher in my hands. Um, I don't know yet. So I want to try it and find out. If I find that it's, you know, 
either it has certain fragility issues that I didn't anticipate, or if it's just not driving very well, I'll just revert to the Dirt Thrasher. Um, the main thing I want to watch out for on this car is the spur gear. Even though I have a uh, Charisma slipper clutch mounted onto a pinion gear there to help save the spur gear, I simply do not know how well that's going to work over a race day between practice, qualifiers, and a main, is that going to be enough to save that spur gear? I only have one, I think it's a 70 tooth spur gear, and, and it's an original spur gear in there. If you try to find, you know, uh, spare madcap parts or astute parts, or the same exact parts, uh, for those gears, they're really expensive. People want like 80 bucks for the gear bag because they don't make that part anymore. Um, so before Shapeways shut down, <clears throat> I got a few 3D printed uh, uh, spare spur gears. Um, I don't know, they're probably not as strong, uh, but maybe they'll work as spares, we'll see. So, you know, I, I should have enough to get through a race weekend, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But that's the basic idea. We're looking at something like what, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 cars to bring, potentially an 11th, We'll see, it depends on how much room I have with, you know, parts bins for everything and also tires for everything. Um, you know, I, two years ago, I ended up bringing three four-wheel drive buggies uh, with the YZ10 as my effort option. I was packing everything up and I figured, you know what? What if the first two go horribly wrong? Let me just bring the Yokomo just in case. So maybe I'll do that, we'll see, maybe. Um, so yeah, I don't know what else to really say here uh, other than I, I hope I can fit everything in the car. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess that's the other thing is, um, you know, I, I like to have backup options, as you know, you know, if it's a huge time investment and financial investment to go to this event and it's only once per year, then you don't want to end up being caught out. You know, uh, maybe you only bring one two wheel drive buggy and you spend all day tuning that on Friday, trying to get it honed in when you could have just picked up another car that's set up slightly differently and it's a fundamentally different car and you find that that just works better on that day. So just use that. It saves you time so you can move on to the other classes and make sure those cars also work during open practice. So you're not wasting time. A lot of this bringing multitudes of cars is to try to avoid wasting time. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.